Welcome to Flat Earth Debate. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this channel, or you have not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside the show while it's live, and a link in the info box below the video once it is rendered. But most importantly, if you would like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the shape of the earth. Please do not swear if you join the panel. If you do, you'll be ejected, and if you are, please don't try to rejoin the show using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show as sharing the show increases the live audience of course and this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please please share the show and one last time if you are new to the channel or you have not done so already be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth debate. Now we are joined by Arwin and Renty. How are you gentlemen both doing? I'm doing great. Good afternoon. Good I'm afternoon. still full of this flu, chest infection, but that's life, isn't it? Uh, Ranty's dying. I'm we all dying. need some sympathy from the chat. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you'll get over it. Just mute when you're coughing, when Riley's there. Is it what, for Riley's benefit or for everyone's? Uh, nah, Riley mostly. <laughs> he, he seems to be complaining a lot about Ranty's coughing, telling him to mute. That's true. Good show yesterday, wouldn't you agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was interesting. I, I didn't. I I came in halfway, so I I had no idea what had happened before that. But yeah, that was totally crazy. The, Forty-two. What is it? Forty-three times I had to ask Rumpus if he had scientific yeah. proof of Earth curvature. Yeah, you, you eventually kind of lost count. <laughs> Yeah, I but, definitely got the numbers wrong at some stage along that, that road. But, but yeah, nonetheless, yeah. about 40 times I had to ask him, I'm sure, at more, least. More, more than that. Like Maybe even 40, more. 45 times, something like that. He, you eventually did just stopped counting. But I was just surprised that he used like the same type of evasion tactic at least five times of, yeah, I'm now going to get the proof. Then you hear him typing. And then he starts wandering off into another deviation conversation, going back to ridiculing again. And then, like, eventually you're breaking off, like, yeah, you're not answering the question. He did that five times. Five times. Pretty much the same pattern. It's, it's just totally, it, it is maniacal. I, I predictable. I don't know how to explain that. You could have saved us one and a half hour by just saying, no, no, I don't have it. <laughs> no, nothing I can present that proves Earth curvature can be validated and verified and would be considered scientific proof. So, no, he didn't have anything. That's why it took 43 times of obfuscating that question to get to the point where he presented nothing but crap, basically. I'm just wondering, like, what it must be like to be a rumpus, like, outside of the b the debates. I'm sure he has a perfectly pleasant life. He's just a regular Joe. Just you know, gets up, has a shower, has his breakfast, goes to work, does all the normal stuff you and I do. I don't know. He's come close to having a heart attack a few times. That's for sure. Stressful he gets subject. Sort of wound up all the stuff, doesn't he? He does. Well, that's fine. I mean, I know he's passionate and all, but I mean, it's like you can, you're can you listening to him, but you're envisaging his eyeballs popping out of his head and his veins coming out of his neck, forehead going bright red. You know, you, you can just imagine this is what he's like. <laughs> I, I just imagine him like a, a mechanism, and then when he starts stuttering, you, it's like starting to crash. It's like cog wheels are starting to break off or something <laughs> that thing it just seems like a robot like doing the same mechanism mechanize the same machinations over and over again same deviation strategy over and over again it's just i can't imagining having to live with that type of behavior just can't imagine it Sarks Cool says, Ranty had a cut of the profits this month. No, I'm still waiting for that, Nathan. 
I'll send my in invoice to you later. Text in the post, of course. Perfect. Got a lot of people to pay. Hello, Michael, Michael Fier. How are you doing? Hello. <laughs> I'm going to talk. If you join, please say something so we know you're not a troll just here to boot everyone. I think that was a sniper. Possibly. No. Hmm. So what do you think of uh, Thrive and Survive then with his, uh, the moon is only 70 miles wide? I mean, I think it's going to be hard to prove, like you said, Nathan, before. I wasn't going to offer my opinion on, on air. I just kept quiet when you answered then. <laughs> I mean, he makes, a, he makes a solid case for it, to be fair. Um, but if that's the case, then that would, that would essentially be saying that the moon is no more than 70 miles high. Because that would be one degree of width, you know. So by his logic, that means that the moon could only be 70 miles high at most. Well, that should be easy to prove. Just yeah. move straight towards it. And if you can actually approach it and it gets larger and larger as you approach it, yeah, you just proved the moon is a, a physical, literal object 70 miles away. So I can't see that, though. Because... <laughs> I doubt it'll it'll happen like that. Yeah, but I mean, I can have, you know, when if, if I'm doing my observations from Blackpool and I'm looking at the Welsh mountains, I still feel that the moon is further away. I don't know why that, but I just feel that the moon is more than 70 miles away. Well, that, yeah. Meaningless feelings. Whatever it, whatever its distance appears to be, I don't think it, yeah, you can't really approach it. It'll just move along with your, with your motion anyway. So it's a forever out of reach, or at least, yeah, it, if it is holographic, and I really think that it is, it's part of the globe of the heavens, then it'll just move away with you. And what, yeah, what it's pretty easy to it... test, like just move towards a, a one of these bodies, like the moon, and just see that if you go in a straight line towards it, would it grow bigger? Because any literal physical object, if you approach it, then it'll grow bigger, a very consistent way. I don't think the moon actually does that ever as yeah as you would approach it we do see have yeah, i haven't yeah. seen any footage of it actually growing any bigger through travel just zooming in that's just it should we do some shout outs we've got nathan's looming rage burst hello <laughs> good to have you good to have you <laughs> the rig. Nick, good to see you badge is it badge badge how do you say that yeah badge badge yeah have you in the rig? Good to see you. Sarks, cool. John Watson, yep. Roger MC. Good to have you all here. Please share the show. Yeah, keep coming back. You can't do without us, you know it. My favourites are the commenters that go things like, um, "This show's dying." It's like, "Thanks for watching." And commenting. Yeah. And keep coming back every single day. <laughs> exactly. Be sure to subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> so how many subs do you reckon you're picking up each each week, would you say, Nathan? Each week? I don't, know, I don't know about weekly. I mean, it, it varies from, you know, maybe none. <laughs> some days none. But maybe a couple all the way up to sometimes 10 a day. You know, that's the best I've ever done ever in terms of increasing subscribers <laughs> was after going on Vice Media and I gained 50 in a day that was the most i ever ever gained in a single day 50 but you know anywhere from none to 10 a day sometimes you could probably you could probably do the maths on it all that i have but just before as as it turned to 2018 i was at 5,000 subscribers and now i'm at 5,452 i think unless i've gained any since we've gone live but you know that's about where i'm at so in the last what, january february march what were we in april yeah, so it's about 100 a month then, so... 100 a month. So, I don't know how many the average is out to a day. Three or four, yeah. So, yeah, the show's dying. Terrible. terrible about three a day, on average. Something like that. 
Yeah. Which I see is absolutely fantastic, if I'm honest. That's amazing. Ooh, they got a new... They got a new thing. I'm I'm a transvestite now. Excuse wow. me? Say again? So they're going to give me the full Patricia treatment now, I guess. Are you being trans-investigated? I guess so. It must mean that I'm even more famous than before, if I get to that level of ridicule. Pay no attention, Arwen. Meaningless nonsense. Of course it's nonsense. I'm I'm very, very secure about my sexuality, so it's just funny. It just shows that you're going up in their estimation, because if they've decided to attack you and go to this kind of level, then, yeah, you're obviously playing on their thoughts quite a lot. Well, I do. I, like, I just have to be here, not even mention any details or anything, and just the chat fills up with my name. Like, on average, on a show that I'm present at and actually do speak, I see my ma name typed, like, at least 50 to 80 times in chat, pure by trolls, just trying to make, trying to somehow discourage me in a way, and it's just... I'm just astonished by that. Just astonished that they actually put so much effort in trying to discourage me. And they should know by now that it doesn't actually work. Because I keep coming back. And I, I already said that. Like, oh, you don't want me on the panel? Okay, that means that I'm now instantly going on the panel, even though I was just considering it before. Because I'm like that. Yeah, you get a lot of trouble from the keyboard warriors, but on the whole, they're not really worth any attention. Ah, How you doing, cool. Dawn? Good to have you. Can you hear us, Dawn? I oh. could hear him, but his sound was extremely low. I didn't hear him. Oh. I didn't hear him either, <laughs> to be fair. Please say something <laughs> if you join, Reed. I know you've got another account to try with Dawn, but just make sure you say something when you join. Yeah, and put your mic up. I saw Dawn worry. do a, a live stream the other day, and he is actually reasonably talented as a as a DJ. So he was oh, using yeah. MP3 files on a Pioneer mixing desk that you just basically, like you used to get with CDs, you know, you can actually just put them into the machine and then use two separate wheels, i.e. you weren't actually spinning the CDs themselves like you would with records back in the day, yeah. but you're just yeah, using fashion. the MP3 files. But, you know, he, he did a reasonably good job. I was quite impressed. But not necessarily my favourite genre of music, but still, I enjoyed it. Well What's well done, genre? Dawn. I enjoyed your live stream, mate. What genre was that? Like, um, I think it was drum and bass, but it was kind of oh, um, cool. drum and bass with sort of squealy female vocals over the top which i'm not really a big fan of okay was it like really minimal or was it very wavy because i'm i like drum and bass a lot but only if it is very melodic like high tech wavy type yeah it was it was i mean it was good music there was nothing wrong with it it's just i'm not saying it was bad i enjoyed it you know it was good check it out you know i'm sure dawn will do other live streams he certainly had a few people watching and like me, they were enjoying it. I enjoyed Tim Osman's stream when he plays music. I've got to be honest, I, I really like Tim Osman's taste in music. You know, he does have very good taste as far as I'm concerned. I'm sure he's not for everyone. I'm sure loads of people would say he plays terrible music, but I think it's good. Often I find myself putting Tim Osman's live stream on my big stereo and listening to it, and my kid enjoys it too. So she's often listening to the music Tim Osman plays. You know, Dawn Treader, not so much, but still very good. All right, Fireball, ready to snipe everyone. Bastard. Get out. Did he successfully get rid of Ranty and Arwin? Let's see. No, I'm seconds. still here. About Ranty. I caught him. Oh, yeah. Some of that fireball. We'll see no no ah. in a minute. <laughs> These people are nothing but predictable. <laughs> <laughs> now, fireball coming in. Ranty uh, using his racket to deflect it. Boing. Yeah, well, he was, he was only coming in to snipe, so... Of course he is. That's the only thing he's ever done. <coughs> if we get Dawn back in. Yeah, Dawn, come back. I 
I mean, I really just appreciate generally when people become a content producer. So for all the, the, um, the shit we give Al K, you know, we still do commend him for actually going out there, doing work and producing material because there's a lot of people who don't. Yeah, I think he was um, a little upset about having his image captured uh, on one of my videos. No, no, no. see, predictable as always. Did he snipe everyone? No. Ha ha ha. It's not even like, it, it, it's like about two minutes ago, I grabbed my fast mouse and you're like, <laughs> you just, the, the pattern is so predictable, it's untrue. I'm literally hovered over the X. So whenever they somebody joins, I've literally, it's one click, gone. So they, unless they can snipe within one second, they're not going to get in and snipe today. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these people are probably gamers, so they've got better wrist action than me. You know, they're just quicker with the mouse, especially if they're a PC gamer. Hey, but I was closer, wasn't I? It's definitely like it's now 60 minutes. So they started the fireball came in like after 10 minutes. There you go, flatmate. I should have predicted that one too. <laughs> same order as well, always the same order. Mm -hmm. It's the same guy, I think it must be. Yeah, well, it goes through the same routine, same accounts each time. <laughs> he, he literally thinks he's going to get in, doesn't he? But have he does you ever heard that sniper say something? But maybe it's just a fully automated bot. Just a, a bot program. I don't think so. Sniping. No, I don't think so. There's certain things that you do. Actually, you have to have a proper G Plus account that's that's registered to be able to join the Hangout in the first place. So, you know, these are to a degree at least registered accounts. Hmm. Just a just a game for these people, but that's fine. You know, I've said it all along. When that happens, that's part of the show and often there's people in the audience who've only come to watch that happen and cheer when we get when it takes me two minutes to set another show up. Fine. Hey, our Rave and Lee is in the chat. Shout out to him. <coughs> yeah, you two have been very, you know, I cite you both in terms of your explanations for what you call the slant. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's great. Obstruction, formerly known as curvature, for those not in the know. Dirty air. Mm -hmm. The ballers love that. Dirty air. Yeah, dirty air, the slant. Obstruction, formerly known as curvature. So we yep. get at the horizon a little bit of obstruction. That's all we get. Yeah, it's just very convenient. They they zoom in on the slant, then exclude everything else. Uh, and if they're lucky, there is basically like a mist behind that slant zone. For, yeah, completely obscuring the line of sight beyond that. And then they just call that curvature. Just that one part. They just zoom in on one little square of perception and then say, oh, everything is exactly like that. Everything is curved just like that. So it's a ball. That's the tactic. That's the tactic they seem to fall back on every single time. They can't move beyond that. They, they have to literalize that curvature. <laughs> Sleeping wombat. Sorry, I'm late, Nathan. <laughs> 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 Sleeping Wombat. Oh, that's the funniest name Sleeping I've seen today. <laughs> so Ant Anthony sent me a message earlier and he was like, um, he was basically asking what's the difference between scientific evidence for curvature and Santa. And I was like, well, none, but unfortunately, Math Powerland beat me to that example quite some time ago. <laughs> So when Anthony does join, I'm going to call him that. He may not join at all. I don't, I don't know. He's, I think he's got jobs on today. He may not join. Uh, we'll see. Hopefully he does. Cool. He's, got, he's got the comic timing. It's like on question 38 of me questioning Rumpus and saying, you know, what's your scientific proof of Earth curvature? 
obviously I'm not going to list off all the stipulations that went along with that now, but the point was that Anthony jumped in at that stage and was like, just make sure that we can validate and verify it. <laughs> Timing. I need to get myself a, a solar filter for the P900. Are they available? Yeah, yeah, you can get them. Uh, Didn't think it had a thread on the end. Yeah, it has, yeah. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I didn't think it did. I didn't think they put yeah. that on a compact camera. Not that it's very compact, but you know what I mean. <coughs> no, it does have a thread on it. Yeah, so you can oh, cool. definitely put one on. I want to do some uh, sun tracking at one, you know, in the next month or two when we get a full day of good weather. I want to see whether or not the sun changes its angular size using the same, uh, you know, obviously the same settings and everything. We'll see. With the solar filter? No, it don't. With the solar, yeah. No, it doesn't. You'll get the same effect at the horizon where it blurs. You know when you showed us those pictures where it's like dissolving into the red sky? Very beautiful yeah. pictures. You'll still get yeah. that effect on the horizon as it as it merges into the horizon, but in terms of what it does when it's going over, no, you won't see any angular size change. Well, you should. Well, have you done it? Have you tested it yourself? Yeah, I've put. A, I've had. I've got several solar filters. What? And have you done the sun tracking through the day and done that ex except experiment? Yeah. Well, I've, I've done it loads of times. Yeah. I mean, you won't see any angular change, Runty. I'm sorry. Right, okay. I mean, there is. I've been corrected myself. on this point because I've done it and I've done it in a rough way. I'm not going to try and profess that I've done some, you know, really well laid out experiment that I could document now. I haven't, but I have done it and I couldn't see any size change whatsoever, you know, based on, like I say, just my judgment of what's there. And I've stated that and been corrected that there is a very tiny change. So, you know, you can you can look that up. I'm sure it's curved water that can be credited with that. Hello, the bunny. How are you Hello. doing? You say hello. <laughs> yeah, essentially, I'm more interested in seeing what happens at, at sunset. Oh, I see. Yeah, well, fair enough. You'll get some interesting effects. You know, the, the same as what you've got already, pretty much. Hmm. Oh, come on, guys. Come on, somebody just join and just actually join. Are you that afraid? Come on. Dunning crew. Hello, yeah. Dunning. Hello, Eric. How are you doing? Can you say hello? Hello. Come on, people. It's trolls joining. It is. That's all it is today. Deter the determined to snipe. I noticed two came in at once then, so... <laughs> yeah, I noticed. <laughs> you got one, I got the other, I think. But they're straight on mute, the same pattern every time. Come on, ballers. Come on, actually join. Do something. Bring some curvature evidence. We want to see the. We want to see the. Curve. Yeah, you can do better than the rumpus. Dawn Treader, hello. Hello, hello. Dawn Treader. Yeah, that's the real him. There you go. I'm here. I'm here this time. My mic didn't work, so. Ah, that's all right. And Good we can see you. your camera. Good to have you. Yeah, can you just show us your equipment? I know you've been on screen before, so let's just. I just want to show the audience because I was talking about it earlier. I like tech stuff. Maybe you'll put your camera cap back on for a storm and I'll pop you up on screen if you do. If you don't I want guess to, don't I worry. Could. There you but go. You can just come to my YouTube channel and watch. Um, so that's it. Hey, Somewhere there. Somewhere like oh, yeah, that. Cool. Yeah, I didn't realize you had more. So you've got even more equipment. Oh, cool. You're a very techie guy. Yeah, I've got my little computer station. Johnson, hello. Hello, John. Good to have you. It's also a real person. <laughs> What are we talking about then? It's quite a relaxed show. Thanks for being nice earlier. No. No, it's a pleasure. I, I'm glad that you're producing stuff, mate. You know, and I did enjoy your stream. Yeah, that's my main hobby. Flat Earth just is a new hobby. Cool. Do what you like, man. That's what I say. If you enjoy doing those um, those DJ streams, I reckon you could build up an audience because you're good. 
Yeah, I guess what? I had 26 subscribers a couple of months ago, and after I put Flat Earth and PSYOP in the title, I've now got over 100. Excellent. I, th I think it has the words Flat Earth, obviously, in the title. Getting to 100 subscribers is possibly the hardest um, milestone. I say that with all sincerity. A thousand, it seems like it's hard, but if you're producing content, it, it isn't. Um, but even when you're producing content and you're putting it out there and you've got five, six, seven, ten subscribers, no one's watching it to get them subscribing. So it's really hard to get up to a to a hundred. So well done. Yeah. A bit guy I had to use the words flat earth, but it's clickbait and everyone does clickbait on YouTube. Yeah, well no, you are talking about flat earth. You, you you addressed me in there. You asked a couple of questions regarding Flat Earth. So, you know, it is a side subject you're interested in. So I don't think it's clickbait to put it in your title because if someone was to ask you something, you would answer them. So yeah, I don't okay. see that as clickbait. I stream the Discord and stuff as well sometimes. Yeah, exactly. I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't for one second see it as clickbait at all. I had a conversation with Riley. Me and Chris did on Riley's show the other night. That was quite cordial. Yeah, he said he, he pinched you to the wall on the... Um, the stars in terms of get, gathering the south um, rotations. Kind of, yeah. yeah. Uh, his condition is he wants it exactly the same time, looking exactly south. So I was trying to explain, you can still see there's a second point of rotation without being exactly south. Yeah, but like you, can see, from... you can see two points of rotation from the equator with a wide angle lens. I think he wanted it from two different locations in the south, though, at the same time, with them both yeah. verifying that they're pointing south. Chemo is now on the back of that argument saying, this is what we need. This is what we need to prove the globe. Well, globe of the heavens, at least. Yeah, I'm still, sphere. yeah, in my theory, I'm not even uh, certain, like, is it a globe of the heavens that is spinning round of, or is it more like a cup with just a northern pole point? Not certain. I've a seen cup. conflicting evidence of what is seen in the south. Uh, so. What do you think about Riley saying he would jump back to globe if we did this observation at the same time? I think it would be very, it was very presumptuous of him to say that. And I don't think he would actually say that now. I think he's got quite a big declination issue. So he's obviously going to be not very convinced about how exactly someone is pointing south. Well, there is an issue with that, at least. With the magnetic poles, there are issues uh, with the South Pole, big issues. Stay. I also, I called Dell up last night on the phone on his show. He's, yeah. he's, got, he's got a new costume. He's bought himself a suit with all funny words on it and it, some uh, weird, weird glasses. So he said he's going to, he's got a new uh, upcoming series, something about TV, where he's going to be taking on charlatans and sophists. On TV, yeah, and I just he's he's got like four hundred like people on watching TV him. or on his on his channel. He said, uh, "I'm going to be on TV." I don't know how. Holy shit! Truthfully, he was talking about it. it. Could be a series on his show. Huh. Well, maybe he did get some contact. But I was a bit guided because he asked me, you know, have, have you got any measurable proof of curvature? And I said, obviously, I can't give that over the phone. So he wants to know, well. Do you think it's a globe? I said, yes, I do. And he said, he said it's very blatantly clear, like, it's a globe. So and he won't answer. I said, what about whole mountains being obstructed from the bottom? What about sunsets? And he just says, no, 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 no. And he just, like, if he can't answer one question from Dawn, who didn't finish school, how, how is he a messiah to 400 people? I just don't understand it. Well, he has a lot of charisma, and... Yes, he, he is not like a nerdy type, like many of you guys and us in a way as well. Like, and we actually have the patience to answer yeah. all the machinations that you bring forth. He just doesn't have that. He does another thing, and he's like not afraid to just step to people yeah, and I do his it, thing. And he does it, it great, and he's very popular. So he's just he's on another corner. Yeah, he, he does he it in his own way. No argument, does he? But that makes his argument tighter than most people's. Because no, he... but his argument still stands. He just doesn't have an, an intellectual blanket to make it appear as much as he is smarter. He just doesn't care about that. He's yeah, but all he cares about is he believes. That's what he's basically saying, and he believes he doesn't water's explain level. about it. But believing water's level is enough to tell his 
family, Earth is not a globe. Apparently, what? to him, it is. Not really although belief. he does have some more arguments. If you that's not belief, though, it. is it? Water at rest is flat. You know, it's used as a measuring tool for specifically that purpose. So it's not really a belief to say that water at rest is flat, or that it but, seeks its level. That's true. That's there's many fact. images of uh, oceans bending in there of the globe. Well, that's no. not water at rest, no. though, is no, it? No, that's absolutely not. True. That's, that's that's. Space oh. photos, soundy photos. That's yeah, what... but that's all fish islands uh, modified yeah. imagery. So no. yeah, yeah, it is. No, no, no. Soundly is not using a fish island. No, Soundly but that's the no actual, that's refraction. That's a refraction zone. That's an apparent slant. That's not curvature because there's no consistency. In a refraction it. it's just zone. a specific zone in the perspective the curvature that exactly like apparently below, curves, but... but it does not continue to curve. Hang on, Arwen. Arwen that's a single there. zone. Oh, and Dawn Treader, you just said that Soundly shows the water curving. Could you bring up an image where Soundly has once shown water curving? Um, you can't blatantly see the water's curving. You can see the bridge. That is... that info... so, so that, so that okay, I can then... bring up an image for you. You can see yeah. that the bridge is obviously level with the water, and you That's can the see the bridge curving. I said, I said the water curving. Yeah, but obviously the water <laughs> curving is what you deduce from seeing the bridge curving. No, that's the optical illusion. No. Yeah, because he's looking through fog on all these images. It's foggy, it's misty. You've got the dirty air that's creating the um, miraging that's going on at the horizon. So, what to about his... the air incoming airplanes that to disappear to behind credit. the horizon? Dawn's already feet. Feet. they disappear out of view. 200 feet before they land. Dawn's already conceded it's perceived curvature. So, he hasn't said in any way that he can show us measurable, measured curvature. It's just a perception. And if Dawn yeah. wants to perceive that as curvature, good for you. You know, fine. That's your perception. But that's all it is, it's, your perception. It's your imagination about what you're seeing. That's literally what it is. It because it is refraction. It's an optical effect it fits the that model perfectly. can fool you into seeing curvature. But it's not literal. It's an optical effect, and it's only in a very specific zone. You've just it decided. is not universal. Oh. It is not a universal curvature that is all present. Hello. Hey, Spurs. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, just about to kick you. Good, good job you spoke. <laughs> it was just loading so slowly, but yes. I think there's a, a lag to this. Give, give, <laughs> give so, I do find that weird that you ask for bendy water and it's hard for us to provide it. Like, we have to go to space photos of a ball, blue marble, to show you bendy water. No. Because I can show you a soundly for picture, which to me is... Like, I deduce bendy water because I can see the bridge is level and it's bending. And it's bending exactly with the globe Earth model. Well, hang on, you do realize. No, it that... doesn't do that. It, it just. It, very... it does. They model. They've no, modeled... no, no, no. It's just a very specific zone that you actually look onto that apparently curves. But it's like a curvature. Any curvature uh, based on the globe model should be consistent and persistent everywhere. And it's but, not. It's just that one single zone within the perception of that. Of you that think camera. there's some, some kind that's of special it. fog in on Lake Pontchartrain that's different from other places? Special fog? No, yeah, it that, happens that's, everywhere. That's the obstruction. It's it, the line of sight is cut off. Anytime you look through fog, further. and, and it, all of that sight before that does not curve. It's just that one little window that you're gazing on that seems to apparently curve. So what about the refraction because of refraction light. bending light upwards in a single slant and then because the further down line of sight is obstructed because of the air moisture or whatever is actually causing that that obstruction you don't see that the line of sight continuates in a perfectly straight line from that slant point on in other footage where the air is very clear you do actually get to see that like the isle of man footage for example all, all those other footages that Ranty and Riley have taken. So Soundly's images are full of fog, and Ranty's yeah. and Riley's are really good. Now it's it, it fogging up is in your advantage when you want to imagine that the refraction zone is curvature, because the fog in the distance then hides from the line of sight that it just continues on in a straight line. It's very convenient. For your imagining of the curvature. It's very convenient because it fits the globe math perfectly. 
No, it doesn't. It doesn't no, at it all. It does. They've modeled no, it. It just, it just oh, fits oh, it perfectly oh. in that one small also square it of on your view. Earth, and it doesn't it look only like fits it. in that one single square of your view. It doesn't fit universally as it should. And it doesn't. But saying you can make mathematics fit perception is, for me, quite literally meaningless. No, yeah. the perception fits the mathematics. Well, so what? Both neither are proof of anything. Well, don't you, don't you think that's quite a coincidence? Uh, it means nothing because it proves it's nothing. It's exactly a coincidence. Yeah, it means nothing. It's a coincidence that Sally's taken an image yeah. that fits the globe math perfectly. Yeah. yeah. It, he took a one single frame of a specific distant no, location. One single frame. It appears done, to be curved. He's done live that, stream. That frame just shows that one single part that just is apparently curved. Oh, and that's an optical effect. Hold on, hold on. Excluding hold on, everything both else hold on. that is not curved. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Branty, you've got a video yeah. that you've just published. Can you bring it up yeah. on screen? We don't need the sound. If you can just play the pictures from your most recent video. The end part or. Just a whole video, we'll just pop, pop it up, share your screen, and I'll just let it play through. It's about six minutes long, we'll just leave it up on screen. Because it's got I'm narration. Gonna, I'm going to bet 100 pennies that it shows obstruction. Okay, well, it's not actually a video of the obstruction of Earth yeah. curvature, it's from a side-on it view. It's side-on view. Is it objects in the ocean? You'll see, just be patient. It's okay, Dawn, okay. there's no rush. Who's the bet put that 100 pennies in the super chat, Dawn? 100 pennies? Yeah, 100 pennies. I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't see any super chat go by. Am I blind? No, I just, I just hypothetically bet 100 pennies that Ranny's video yeah, shows obstruction. Gonna, he's going to lose the bet. He's going to have to put that into super chat. Let me know when you... Oh, yeah, you are ready, Ranty. If you can... Yeah, yeah. yeah, just press play and leave it to run. It's got uh, narration underneath. I'll just check okay. the screens presented nicely for the audience. I'm pretty sure it is. It is. So yeah, looks good. Looks, looks good. looks good. Looks good. 100 people watching this right now. Is it playing? It's very blurry, but I can see obstruction in the background. Yeah, it is excellent. See the, see the bridge curving behind the horizon, can't you? It's, yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely video. curving over the horizon, isn't it? Yes. Yes, okay. But behind it, it seems to just continue on? No. No, really? So what is that? Flat there. Interesting. And in distance, what is that there? This is a different image now. This was from his entire video. Video. There we Still go. That's the one with obstruction on it. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the one. There's no obstruction. We're not looking at any obstruction. Nothing's obstructed, Dawn. You can see the bridge curving behind the horizon. Curving, right. That's it. Curving. You've got it. We're on track again. You do realize that both these images are taken from the same video he just told you. So in one it shows this apparent curvature that you immediately latch onto as, oh, look, that is the proof. And in the other one, it doesn't. Fooled you. Hey, what's this supposed to be showing? Funny. <laughs> this, this is sound no, you should, have, you should know yeah. this. You should have studied Soundly's work because you're referencing it as proof of curvature. Oh, the real beyond down. the imaginary curve? I doubt it as he's gone straight on mute. It was funny to see him on the show the other day. Yeah, it was yesterday. He was good. I think it's the real one. He was good. So why have you re-uploaded this, Ranny? What does this mean? Well, this is just to... Uh... Oh, look. There's the... Well, just watch the rest of the video and you'll see. This just proves with the motion that it's an optical effect. It's refraction. It's not actually a curve. It's refraction that appears to cause... An apparent curve. Let's so say, hypo let's say like hypothetically, there's two curve. other lakes in the world, and there's two other sound leaks, different people from around the world, and they've got the same. <clears throat> footage. Hang on, what's this? What's this showing here? Just what's, proves the refraction zone. Let's, let's see exactly. what Dawn's got to say about it, because Dawn has cited this and said we're seeing curve in sound leaks videos. Yeah. So what's this? Good point, Ranty. What's this point here? Is this going over the? Is the curve gone the other way now? Um, I'm not sure what's happening there. Refraction. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening. But we're asking you in reference to the ball you think it burnt, bends around and have cited this as proof of it. What's going on right now? Do we live on a concave earth now because of the lights and the way they appear to us? They even seem to split apart. Well, refraction is variable. We've talked about this before. 
You see that that one there where it's curving down? Yeah, yeah. that's our argument. That's what it's curving well done, Dawn. Thanks. Curving Good down. to have you on side. <laughs> curve it up. And this is what soundly videoed. So, good dawn. Well done. Not curvature, refraction. Good job. Yeah, and if it just so. Oh, have I lost my whole panel? I didn't even see anybody join. Amazing. In the blink of an eye, my entire panel drops. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Yeah, they didn't like that, did they? I don't know, what, what were we talking about? Oh, I believe it was uh, soundly and um, showing the curving up and curving down. But nobody joined. Did you see anyone join? Mm, no. Uh, but then again, I was playing the video, so... That's I true. The back door, but so. I didn't see anyone join. Oh, well. It will remain a mystery. Yeah, do you want to pop that video back up, Ranty? We'll just let it play through to the end. I mean, it pretty much made its main point, but it's nice to have the whole thing played. Why not? Play it again, you mean? Play it again, Sam. Or get it to the bit where it's like no boys and girls. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did you make that video? I did, yeah. That's excellent. I mean, I know that um, Anthony had done variant, a variant on it, but... Honestly, I think that's a much better video. It's it's more concise than Anthony did it. And it's, you know, don't get me wrong, it's the second time it's been done, but fantastic. You know, really concise. Good music too. Did you get a strike for that? No, 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 I don't. you don't get a strike if it, I'm not monetized, you see, so. Yeah, uh, but they take, a, that's what I mean by strike. They, they demonetize the video in the respect that they, they don't allow you to monetize it and say this has got copyright material on it. Did it state that it had got copywritten material on it? No. No, I haven't had a notification from YouTube saying that. So I'm amazed. Normally I'll get... Sorry? I'm amazed. Yeah, normally I'll get a, an email uh, saying that um, there's been a copyright claim on the video and uh, it, they'll, they can play ads on it and obviously the revenue will go to the um, whoever's the copyright owner. Sure. However, I didn't get one for this. So... Fair enough. Can you, can you play it, stick it about halfway through or however long you've got to? Yeah, so through. in case people aren't aware of what actually is happening here, uh, this is a, a solid bridge, and this is uh, some water um, in a canal sort of um, area. These lights that are on the top were fixed to the bridge, and the lights underneath are the reflections in the water. So that's... And what we're seeing here is the, the refraction that you get both up and down. So people that have always said that they don't get refraction up and down, clearly... Soundly, the ball earth god, so to speak, of uh, ball earth proof, has proven that light does go up and down as well. So this is what this entire video was about, basically. Because there has been some people come on the show recently and said that light doesn't go up or down, it just goes one way. <laughs> yeah, they like to inject the presupposition that it is curved, therefore it must be only deviating from the 76R, the standard that it bends around the presupposed curve. Therefore, 
it's not actually bending up and down it's just a slightly less variant of down it's like yeah based on your presupposition that there's a curve and that's the whole point of this debate show so yeah you can't really come in and just presuppose a curve and use that as your evidence and proof when you inject the evidence that is completely and utterly suggesting that it's flat I mean, this is his video. You can see already that the light is the, the solid fixed lights along that red line are going oh. up hey, and right. down. Now, they're not physically moving because they're attached to the bridge and the camera isn't moving either because it's it's a time lapse. It's actually fixed in place. What you're actually seeing is the light from these solid sources changing both up and down, being moved around by refraction. However, what Soundly will do and he has done on this particular video, in fact, is when it, the drop at the end, when the lights are going at the furthest part down, he is claiming that that is the curvature of the earth. Yep. This is what he, this is the cherry picking that I'm picking out in this particular video. It's literally a cherry picking. It's like yeah, that one it, part it, it, that it, just it, happened it, to be a little bit little bit enough curved that's shows the curve of the entire earth that's what he's doing every time i'm pretty sure this is a concave slam dunk actually <laughs> <laughs> maybe who knows i'm telling you man there's refraction to take into consideration but basically the earth bends up 76r so yeah man when you account for the fact that it bends up as a presupposition this is a slam dunk concave proof man there's no denying it to me it is more likely that the earth is concave than that it's a globe at least it seems much more likely and it, it about as likely as dick earth. there's more physical possibility to it there's less holes in the in the entire theory there's no, there's no holes in dick earth theory uh, just the one at the top <coughs> So those are a different part of the structure in Dick Earth. They're like black holes somewhere else. Flying around yeah. in a circle towards black holes sometimes, sucked into them. But Dick Earth gets like spaghettification effects happening, it gets stretched when that happens. Alkay's just Check said, out Dick actually, Earth. Alkay's put, actually ran to you are the one that's cherry picking. How so? How, how am I cherry picking? I'm not cherry picking. I'm telling you right now that that definitely, I've read it somewhere, that conforms perfectly to the presuppositional argument that is concave because you saw it, man. The light's bent up and down. But that doesn't matter because we've already factored that into the maths. So mathematically, concave proof right there. You got it? Yep. We're not cherry picking. We're choosing apples. Yeah, man. You've got to pick the best one. Oh, so it's to too agree. bad. Like it was pretty good having Don in there. He was actually behaving. So yeah, too bad that didn't continue on. Yeah, and Don's like Don's setup. good. It's a shame Don couldn't stay. But oh well, I'll put the link out publicly again in a minute. Then we'll it's battle it's trolls. Better than when they don't get all rude and everything, you know. It's more and interesting. Don's, Don's a good guy. Yeah, well, they couldn't have Dawn in there because ultimately he said that Soundly had captured water curving, which he didn't. Uh, and then, obviously, when I was showing about the re how retarded Soundly's videos actually are, um, they sniped the hangout. So it's just what happens. He was failing in his argument. Hmm. At least uh, we managed to keep it in there for 40 minutes. Before actually being sniped, so That's it. I'll do a quick link and then I'll put the public um, chat link out, so All right. and actually rejoin, and then we'll battle trolls for a bit. Why not? Because we've got <laughs> approximately, I think we've got about an hour left, maybe a little bit more. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Hope you're enjoying the debate thus far. Thanks to Dawn for making it not a circle jerk in this instance. 
If you would like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they're live and a link in the info box below the video once the video has rendered. But if you'd like to join the discussion, simply click the link in a moment when I publish it in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the shape of the earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin this stream. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show as this increases the live audience, of course, and that in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please, please share the show. And one last time, if you are new to the channel or you have not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth debate. There is a little over one hour left on this live stream. Yeah, I noticed we've got LK in the uh, in the chat. Now, he's the gentleman that put a video up in the last couple of days measuring the height of the hill at uh, St. Bees. Um, and he went to great detail of uh, showing where he was, um, throwing the tape down and all this kind of stuff. However, the most important part of everything, which was actually showing the measurement on the of the reel, he didn't do it. He didn't produce that. Um, he just claimed it was, a, I think, 131 feet um, without actually showing that evidence. So I think you need to up your game, LK, because if you went to measure the hill and the one thing that we needed to see was the measurement on the tape, you didn't produce that, buddy. It was a good effort, though. Hey, Don. I'm back. Alright. Just turn it down a little bit. I'm back. Alright. Good to have you back. I wasn't watching the back chat, but I'm guessing it's because I wasn't trying to troll you guys hard enough, so we all got sniped. Yeah, they don't want us having a reasonable and polite conversation, but there we go. I'm still grateful that you've tried. They instantly think that we should have knives out for each other and be slashing at each other's throats on this debate platform, but be fair, it's, I prefer it when it's civil. It's just not as entertaining for the trolls. It's Bell, is thing. that you? No, it's not. Oh, he's gone. Yeah, it needs to be gotten rid of out the back chat. Yeah, I've gotten rid of him. Okay, why don't you, why don't you join the panel, bud? Why don't you come and tell us about your uh, measuring the height video? I'd love to see the measurement on the tape. Didn't he tell you when you met him that he wasn't actually interested in the debate? <laughs> um, Just, It seems odd that somebody would say that is still publishing videos about this subject. No, it's so out of date though. I mean, he produced a bit. It took him like two and a half weeks to put that video out. I don't know why. I mean, because the, the height of the hills been been and gone. It's like it's like yesterday's news, isn't it? Yeah, and it doesn't bring back the lighthouse. Hello, leave alone. Leave alone. Can you say hello? <laughs> you know what? The thing is, when you've got people that are coming in and you've never seen them chat once in the side chat, you've never seen the name ever appear in there and mention the speaker or anything, and then they just appear in the in the Google Hangout, you know they're not a real account. Right, all right. See, be on the curve. That's not going to be you again. Straight on mute. Dell joined with his camera on, so instantly on you is Dell. Right. And I think a few people try and join with their camera on, but point it at something random, so it seems like they're legit. And I boot them as well because they normally go on mute immediately. It's like, okay, this isn't, all okay. this isn't my first rodeo, every... guys. <laughs> I've been doing it in this out. in this manner with the public link out, like the most dangerous way. I used to do it when I was doing it without OBS, like super, super risky. Um, don't do it. If you're not using OBS, just don't publicly broadcast the link ever um, and you'll be fine. But once they're in your hangout, if they can kick you out, that's it, they've got control of your hangout for five minutes. But nonetheless, I still published the link when I was doing sun tracking two years ago. And it was dodge. It was very, very dodge. You know, I was risking my channel every moment it was live. Whereas now, it's not the, it's just not the case. You know, this guy who goes around calling uh, himself I watched one of Timmy's videos where he got Dell for like the fifth time. 
he showed his ankles and that and took over for five minutes. Just thought, why can't they work out OBS? Like, he's still got a weird back hangout method now with two hangouts. It's like OBS is too complicated for him, but he's still a messiah of 400 people. It's confusing. What's your you issue? Is it because you're producing content issue. now? This sounds like just flat out jealousy. I really don't like him. So why'd you watch him? Uh, I kind of see it as observing a cult leader in a way, to be honest. So you do like him? No. Yeah, you like observing the cult leader that is Dal in your mind. That is yeah, an enjoyment. I, I enjoy observing it, but that doesn't mean I like him. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you can call it love to hate if you want, but, you know, it's the same thing. Maybe obsessed or fascinated is the word. Right. So you're actually a big fan of Dal. No. I hate yeah, him. you are. You just don't like me pointing this out to you. I also watched a video recently. I found it. Um, him indoctrinating his daughter live on YouTube. See, you want to talk shit. about him? You want to tell us about what he's up to? Man, you're a mega fan. <laughs> it seems like you must watch most of his live streams if you if you know him that well. He's one of the worst. It's all new to me, man. I don't watch Dell. No, me neither. So, but it's nice to have a fan on the show that can tell us what he's up to. Yeah, thanks I for watch, watching. I do watch Dell. I watch him. You love to love him, though, right? You've got someone who loves to hate him, someone who loves to love him, but both fans equally. Well, I I watch both, him, but I came in there adding and I, to his I, metrics. I made some comments in the chat, just normal comments, and then I got blocked. So I think I'm actually blocked on his uh, channel from typing Yeah, me anything. too. Like, <laughs> I, I came on his show once, uh, or maybe even twice. Uh, I think I mirrored one of those. And then after a while, he didn't like me basically countering his arguments for technical sake <laughs> after that. Yeah, I think he blocked me. Hi, hey, Lottie. How you doing? Can you hear us? Fake hey, Lottie. Um, was you, Lottie, try again on a different account. Feel free. Just say something when you join. It's all gone quiet. Has everyone been kicked already? No. No. Uh, still here. Okay. Just checking. Yeah, quite. Like I say, I mean, I enjoy Dell's passion, you know, because he does, he doesn't hold back, and uh, yeah. he actually goes out and he does activism. So, you know, I've got nothing bad to say about that's, him. That's the bit uh, I don't, don't like when he approaches children in parks and shit, vulnerable people on the street. Yeah, well, approaching vulnerable people in the street or under guise of government policy in the schools. It's either way. Well, one's backed up with facts and science, isn't it? And one's just Dell's madness. Mm. It's just a side, it's just a sided war is always level. It is. Well, if we went through this earlier. What, what, what makes you think it isn't? Well, because Earth is clearly a globe and 70 something clearly. percent. Why is it clearly? Well, because you can see whole mountains obstructed from the bottom. You can see sunsets, eclipses, southern stars. None Many of what, none of that involve things. water. You've just you know you've just done a rumpus. So I say, how do we validate this picture no, from I'm space? Saying, he says, well, go to St. Bees with a theodolite. I say, how do you prove that water can at rest bend or doesn't act as Dell describes, which is absolutely accurate? And you're saying the proof of that is the stars. This is, I mean, I don't know how you do these mental gymnastics no, to do that. I'm not saying the stars prove curved water. I'm saying I verified the shape of the Earth from all of those different things that are impossible on a flat earth. And I know 70% of the surface of earth is covered in water. So it must bend, mustn't it? So, it's, no, it's so what it possible. is, hold on, hold on, I went to, it's an extrapolation based on your logical reasoning, which proves nothing. Yeah, pretty much. Right, good for you. You have what's known as a belief. It's not really a belief though. It is, is it? Because... absolutely, unequivocally a belief. The shape of the globe explains why a sun sets. Flat Earth doesn't. Good for you. You can believe that all you like. We have two points of rotation in the sky. That's impossible on a flat Earth unless you want to admit that the sky is fucked up. I don't... Uh, please don't swear. Yeah. Okay, sorry. It's all right. 
just I know you're not annoyed, so it's not a problem. But yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's a good, it's a good. I just mean it's weird and messy, like a simulation sky. Like if Owen's ready to admit that, he's ready to explain the simulation sky for all of you. But most of you, you know, try and deny it. Like even Riley, when he's making up his experiment of looking exactly south, getting past the declination, he's not acknowledging that there's two points of rotation in the sky already. I acknowledge that. I've been and seen it with my own eyes. Right. So how do you think that works on a flat Earth? You know, a second point of rotation in the south. I have no coherent explanation for it, unfortunately. Okay. But we do. So, does that make the world a globe? Yes, it fits the spinning globe model perfectly. You know, you see, you've even got their conflation immediately ready. It matches the model. So it does, yeah. A spinning globe makes two points of sure. rotation in the sky. Sure. That's how it, it works. Ma it matches a model. Matches observable reality. No, you've just said observable reality matches the model. So now you're yeah. spinning Proving it on its head model, correct. to try and make it its circular reasoning. What, that is what you're doing. Have you seen the Mount Rainer uh, photograph of the mountain shadow on the clouds? Anybody, anybody? Yes, I have. And have you got an explanation for that on a flat earth? How does the sun go below the mountain and project a shadow up onto the clouds? Well, the, further, the closer it gets to the horizon in the distance, would mean that at some point it's going to project its light up. So, so how does the same it get way closer to the what's horizon? On screen, what's on screen now is a close <laughs> to the horizon sun, and you can probably see that it's light in the bottom of those clouds. So yeah. if there's a mountain between it and those clouds, it would project that shadow up. Yeah, because the sun is at the horizon. Because it, Yeah, the because the sun's at the horizon. Uh, curved. The sun to, right, the horizon so I've explained it, and not once have I needed to interject with the words, because the Earth's a globe. But, Hi, how boy? How you doing? Hello. Hello. Yo, pish, pish, pish. Say something, how boy? I've got rid of him already. I couldn't hear him say anything. Yeah. I can't get in the back chat now, for some reason. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so, I don't really understand the flat Earth explanation of how the sun even gets to the horizon. Well, I can explain uh, using the holographic globe of the heavens theory. <laughs> no, that's a fair point. I mean, I have no explanation for you. I don't understand the mechanics of the sun, and I'm happy to admit that. Watching okay. its patterns, that doesn't prove what it is, where it is, how it works. But you can watch its patterns, and you can plot those into a model. But that doesn't yeah prove earth is a sphere not enough for you but it is for everybody else that's fine you uh, that's what i said you're entitled to your belief yeah good for you okay so if you're looking at nathan's screen now why does it look like the sun is localized there uh, what do you mean localized why does it look localized if you look at the area that's lit up as opposed to the area that's dark it's in a sphere shape as opposed to a, a hard line. Now, if that was going around the, the curve of the Earth, it, would, it wouldn't it would look localised like that, like a spotlight. Mm. I, don't, I don't know what localised looks like. I don't, I don't know. Well, when we say a localised sun, we mean a sun that isn't as far away as 93 million miles. We're yeah, saying much, when you say it much, looks much like that, it. what do you mean? that it's only enlightening a small area of the sky as opposed to the whole sky as the sun sets. Why is right. it, why is it, why is the light localized around the sun rather than dis dispersed over the entire horizon? As you would expect to see on a, as it goes around the, as the sun sets. I'd assume it's because it's setting. I, I'm not an expert on light rays either. It's just an apparent disc, literally, as it moves down on the edge of vision, it just goes into the earth, just disappears there, because it, it's not physical, it's not a physical object, it's just there, apparently. But and you've then, just decided that, Owen, haven't you? you can't oh, I base it. that on observations of how the globe of the heavens functions, and 
in approachability of the heavenly bodies and all that. Do, do you believe that you've got a better idea of what the sun is than all the other people on planet Earth? Or Earth? Same. Well, not all of them, but that same. I, I, I don't jump to conclusions that easily of physical literalism when it comes to the heavenly bodies, definitely. But it's very hard, it, like just because there's a consensus among many people as to what it supposedly is doesn't mean that they are correct. It just means that the, the psyche of the, of the general human being tends to jump to conclusions <clears throat> that seem more logical, more simple. People believe in simple things rather than complex things because well, that's what really they can simple, imagine. It. It's not simple, is it? The science of what the sun is and how it moves, that's not simple. It's abundant well, in explanation though, so there's plenty of references. And if all your references reference one thing, you will accept that thing. Hmm. Yeah. I just... Why are the other clouds not lighting up? Why is it only the clouds nearest the sun that are lighting up? When the other clouds are, are, are obviously still in sunlight, but they're not getting that really red reflection of the sun. I don't know, I'm guessing because it's setting half the sunlight's behind the horizon, maybe. But how yeah, but is that can... an explanation? Jazaconda, hello. The rumpus. Hello. 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 Good to have you. Nice to see you again. Doesn't sound like the rumpus. This is definitely me. Yes, I'm, I'm a little bit sleepy, but it's definitely All right. me. Cool. Sleepy? It's ten past two. <laughs> yeah, I, had a, I, had a, I was attending some lectures in Oxford yesterday and um, you know, I had a bit too much to drink last night. Oh, wow. How did it go? Uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a lecture on the... Uh, the uh, by the uh, woman who does the astro quizzical uh, blog and she's into galaxies and uh, explaining various uh, solar system effects and galaxy and dark matter and... Um, uh astro she's an astrophysicist and uh she was explaining talking about astrophysics and um and her book that she's just released on the subject colliding galaxies is her speciality cool what's her name nice science fiction uh her name is uh jillian schruber and she runs the astro quizzical blog uh which you can actually link to if you look up astro quizzical uh, astro quizzical on the globe google uh, um, on google um uh, you'll get to astro astroquizical.com and she's decided to do that she got so many questions she once uh, was in a hangout or something i can't remember what it was how she started off or well, university something or some online thing and she was i said okay i just won't bother i'll just ask answer questions so then from all those questions she was asked um from people she's always interesting questions and uh, from that she wrote this blog she's been doing for three years and then she realized she'd answered about god knows how many questions and she's still got 500 unanswered um, thing at the beginning of the university to cover anything to do with astrophysics, anything to do with cosmology. And she's got, so she thought, well, she's written so many answers, she thought she put it into a book. And then she came to tell us all about her her life and um, uh, and cosmology and how she's still got 500 unanswered questions. She still sort of quizzed her about quasars and things and um, how, how the Earth should look, uh, how, the, sorry, how the universe should look, and um, uh, a bit of time dilation, dark matter, which um, is in colliding galaxies, you get all sorts of issues to do with dark matter, where the dark matter just carries on going through, whereas when we have a colliding galaxy, the gas, the gaseous part of it interacts with one another, but the dark matter bit doesn't. So the dark matter shoots through, the dark matter shoots through the um, the, the collision, but the actual gas and stuff um, actually sort of stays in a blob. Uh, and then they think that the uh, dark matter might sort of go sort of like an elastic band, go backwards and then hit recombine um, to join with the uh, collided lump that you end up with after about a billion years or so. Right. Did so, you have any questions? Yeah, so she's into the edge. She's always answering weird questions from people. Did you have any for her? Yeah, I asked her about the colliding galaxies and the explanation of dark matter, and I also quizzed her about the. Well, well, how far you should be able to see in the universe if you want a quasar that you can see in the distance. But of course, 
Um, that's in the far past as well, of course, that the, the quasars that we can see on the edge of the universe are, you know, 13 odd billion years ago, and therefore they look, you also, whenever you ask questions like that, you're also going back in time when the universe was much smaller. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I asked about three or four questions. Actually, I asked probably more than anybody else, actually. Did you get good answers? Were you happy I with think it? so, yes. yes. <coughs> she, was, she was able to give me some good answers as much as she knew. She obviously, things like she was showing us the pictures of Pluto that she was associated with the Pluto people. Uh, the NASA, uh, she knew what, she knew the New Horizons team very well. And so she was saying that two weeks before they went to Pluto, they showed us, she showed us the image on the Hubble Space Telescope they had, which is basically a blob with a, it's a little bit more than a blob. It was, but it had sort of, uh, it, it, it's a, yeah, I don't quite. Uh, you I know couldn't you make out very much, and then she showed that. Then two, she was saying that now the general public has more idea about what about Pluto than Pluto specialists did two weeks before the arrival of the New Horizons satellite, which she thought was quite amusing. Because now we've got perfect pictures. I don't know if you've seen them. It's sort of a part on the side yeah, of Pluto. No, I heard about how those pictures were supposedly taken, like it flying past it it was very very difficult speed and then taking this one perfectly absolutely blurred picture which makes absolutely well, they, no well the sense. way they had to do that they had to they had to put the computer simulation because they were going past i think it was at thirty thousand miles an hour and so they went i can't remember how close they actually passed it by they had to swing the camera at a particular speed as it was going past Pluto, they had to get the speed of the camera swinging by at exactly the right so they could hold it sort of stationary in shot it was extremely tricky, and they were absolutely. Oh, it was actually scared. moving as the picture was taking. Oh and yeah, that's very interesting because if you actually do that on the Earth, in a miniature setup, it's never gonna yield a perfectly sharp, clear picture. It's gonna <clears> be <throat> blurred. Yes, but that's because we, when you're on the Earth, the Earth is stationary with respect to you. But if you're moving past an object and it's charging past you, if you swing the camera, you can keep it. You can keep it stationary in your field of view. They can yeah, calculate it, Owen. The actual so... object, as you rotate around it, as you move past it, even if you angle it perfectly aligned to that location of the object, it's going to be blurred. You can't no, have no, a perfectly sharp point. picture. That is physically impossible. No, no, they, no, they, modeled it, they, they modeled it, Owen. They modeled it. It has to prior. do with photography, actually. They, no, they modeled it prior to going. Yes, if you no, take a picture okay, well, while you're moving, it's going to be blurred. Owen, just yes, that's because it's jiggling. That's because you're jiggling. If you're in a, if you're something that's jiggling around, you're not. But this is a this satellite is going at a perfectly smooth speed, so it so it doesn't have a problem with jiggling around like you're in an aeroplane or something, which you would obviously get a, a jiggly a, a blurred picture. But if you know exactly how fast you're going, perfectly smoothly, like a satellite is, and you know you're approaching something else, which is also moving very smoothly, then you can just change the angle of the camera as you go by, and you can keep it perfectly in frame. So what was the time delay in? Uh in talking to the satellite from Earth and giving it commands. Oh, well, they, well, they didn't do any of that. They had to do it days in advance. They had to program it, what it had. They had to make an adjustment. They were going to miss it, actually. I think two weeks beforehand, they had a panic. They realised they were going to go too, weren't going to go close enough. And so they had to give it some last minute instructions to give it a little bit of a jiggle oh, um, well. to, to get it on, to get it um, at the right angle. Um, but they nearly missed it very close to and they caused them they were dead scared they weren't going to be able to make this adjustment fortunately they were able to do so and obviously once they they gave instructions they couldn't instruct the thing itself once it got uh, near the target they just simply had to give it a program saying this is what you're going to do this is how you're going to swing your camera this is the where you're going to go by and this is why they were all dead scared they'd cocked it up until they actually got those pictures they didn't know it had all worked but they what, were, year, did, what year did they release this satellite it was about 10 years ago so, ten-year-old technology. Um, what um, definition do you think it was uh, able to capture from ten-year-old technology? Uh, well, we've had very high-resolution digital cameras. It's been very expensive. But the, you know, that's the, the, the difference being made in modern technology is that there's ch how cheap it is. The fact that you can put now put a high-res picture on a bloody mutton phone is a reduction in cost. But we, if you're prepared to pay enough money years ago, which obviously NASA can do, you can you know have. Uh, uh, any sort of resolution that's, that you want, basically. I mean, if you, uh, you know, Hubble, don't, let's not forget, Hubble is incredibly high resolution stuff. And that was launched, what's it, 20 years ago now? Yeah, that With was dramatic too. Mirror. Do you remember when it almost didn't work as well? That was a very similar story. I mean, they got it up there and it, it, well, it didn't, didn't work. It didn't work. It was terrible. And then there was, it was a very. Terrible. It was terrible. It was caused by a hair dramatic. Amazing that there's a similar story with capturing images of this. Um, 
Pluto, amazing that you've got a similar story, really. They almost didn't get it. It almost didn't work. There was a very dramatic, you know, terrible situation where they had to rescue it with the current technology, even though the old technology didn't work. And yet we have these perfect images from Hubble and perfect images from, was it, Juno or whatever it's called. Well, they practice things like crazy. I mean, they go through lots and lots of procedures on this. They test things to death. I mean, th for instance, something like the shuttle. Uh, when the, the program they put into the shuttle to make that work, they had a whole team of people to find out problems in the software. They had, and they would find problems in the software repeatedly. And it's only through the intense scrutiny of a sort of people trying to break the system that they actually managed to make it reliable. Amazing. If you've ever been involved in a big project, Nathan, you must understand that things always go wrong. You're always going to have a story. I mean, that we're landing on landing on the moon, for instance, within 30 seconds of landing, the computer copped up, came up with an error, and they didn't know what to do. But fortunately, some chap in the control had written the damn thing and said, you can ignore the error and carry on. So they did. They very nearly aborted. Old um, uh, uh, Neil Armstrong very nearly aborted the landing of the thing within 30 seconds of doing so, but he was given the okay to go ahead by the controllers when the computer basically said, I've got, I've got too much going on. The radar bouncing off the surface of the uh, moon overloaded the processing power of the CPU and they had to start giving up tasks, they had to stop doing some of the interrupt based tasks. And then it was came up with this error. Unfortunately, the program, he knew all, all the error codes that this thing came up with, said, no, no, that's fine, you can go ahead. And so everybody breathed a sigh of relief, and old Neil Armstrong carried on. But it very, very nearly was aborted. Neil was going to abort that thing there and then, but he just didn't, not quite. Yeah, it's an amazing story, you know. Could almost be made up. Could almost be scripted. You know, you just don't know. We'll never know. We'll never validate and verify any of this stuff. But it's a nice just-so story that kind of is good for the kids. You know, it's nice. It's, yeah, well, it's a good, it's a real story. Like real stories are very exciting. Yeah, it's a real story, like RoboCop. You know, real story. We can all relate to RoboCop. It's a nice story about a robot that was a man, and they turned him into a robot, and then he went and had troubles with the drug dealers. You know, it was uh, it's a nice story. If you think RoboCop's real, Neil uh, Nathan, then well, I think that just is an indication of what you think is real. You can't. Yeah, I could kind of say the same thing about you with these stories from NASA. If you want to believe that these Hollywood fictions from NASA are a true rumpus, that kind of tells me the kind of person you are. The kind of person that believes basically anything that he sees on TV. That's good for you. No, I don't believe everything I see on TV. I'm very sceptical. I require lots of independent evidence. Of course. I'm very I'm critical. Of it. I, I, I he require was all lots over of... RK, you saying to him how well he'd done with his, his measurement of the hill, and he didn't even, he didn't even show the tape measure. Didn't That's even... true. Yeah, no, yeah. I, 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 and I you accept. said absolutely brilliant work. He was, well, he, he was I licking was... his testicles. Over <laughs> well, I think he did a fantastic. I spoke to him. He did a fantastic day. job, he was, he was and you're very skeptical. We get it, Rupert. He was suffering you're like very, he was suffering. very skeptical. In he your was suffering like bias. crazy. With that well, he's, he's demonstrated repeatedly. Comical. That he tries you're to good, good for a job. laugh. You're good for a he's, laugh. He's it's funny. It's good fun having you here because you do amuse us. He's gained my confidence in the fact that he tries to do his very best. Um, for instance, you know you what? There's a great quote from The Rock, right? And I have to swear to quote Sean Connery. And he says, Losers always whine about their best. Winners go home and fuck the prom queen. <laughs> right. Totally good. Well, anyway, he's demonstrated that he, he, he's measured in his uh, claims. Um, and he you can see from the video how he carefully lined up his thing and yeah, he got he a nice tall tape. Really well. Yeah. And he included yeah, shots of the angle. Beautiful. Yeah, did, he, did he almost not quite get the measurement? There was like a precarious moment in the middle when we all thought he wasn't going to get it. And then suddenly he had a phone call from you. You told him how to sort it out. And then they did get the measurement. It was very dramatic. <laughs> I mean, Ranty, you know how unwell he was. And also... He did oh, right. There really is a story that goes with this about how he nearly <laughs> didn't get it. Oh, I love this. He oh, did have, on. if you recall, he did actually try and take some images on his uh, iPhone or whatever, which for some reason switched off. He pressed it twice and didn't work. You know, he's only, there's only one of him, so he couldn't check it. Oh, that's not got, very dramatic. Visuals, oh, come on. I mean, you can't, you, see... you can't expect us to accept that as topping NASA. I mean, come on. You know, Apollo 13, that was very dramatic. You know, that's another instance where they almost nearly didn't make it. You know, not just didn't make it to the moon, they almost didn't make it back home. Worthy of a Hollywood movie, I would think, you know. I, I mean, there was a Hollywood movie about it too, of course, but, you know, that was more realistic. <laughs>
So I mean, you're you're you're. you're I mean, I also I don't regard. I, as far as I'm seeing, he's just not. He doesn't lie, as far as I can see. So um, if he says that he measured as 151 feet, I'm prepared to accept that he's gained my confidence in that regard. And I'm prepared to say, okay, if you say that, that's what I'm going to believe. Oh, really? So you do trust him? You you're so, not yeah. really skeptical. You don't really skeptical. Oh no 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 no! no you, oh, 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 much oh, of what oh, Rumba oh, takes oh, is based on faith and belief. That's okay. You know, why change the habit of a lifetime? I'm also confident because it also agrees with everything. Thing that I've measured visually from the photographs. I can, can you measure your photos. confidence I scientifically? Yeah, is that, is that, is that, is that scientific? Is it measuring Rumpus's confidence in something? You don't actually check it. Well, I have yeah. checked you just it. said that I have you did. It. I can, I've I can, it. I can measure <laughs> Rumpus's confidence mathematically and show that that proves whatever is being asserted. Because if you can measure it mathematically, then it definitely proves stuff. So I'm going to say that I'm going to present a mathematical measurement for Rumpus's confidence. And that's definitely going to prove anything that he asserts. Because, you know, confidence is measurable. It's tangible. It's something that you can get mathematically to prove anything you like. So. by himself, I might have been more sceptical. But it wasn't. We've got five different ways of measuring that cliff. And they all agree. So... Confidence level high. I would put that into the calculator as a level seven on the confidence scale. So that's pretty much proof. I mean, solid proof there. Very confident, Rumpus. Good to know. Five independent ways of measuring the height of that cliff. They all agree. No, no, seven, seven. Seven on the confidence scale, mathematically speaking. So mathematically speaking, you know, we've got at least a 99% chance of this being 100% accurate. You know, mathematically speaking, of course. That proves it. You know, that's that's what maths does. It proves it implicitly. So if you're confident and I can measure that confidence mathematically, then we've got cast iron proof here, my friend. You know, basically LK is correct because we can measure mathematically your confidence level on this subject. So that's I've good been one hundred percent right in all of my hundred percent. Rank has been one hundred percent wrong. No, you can't give it as hundred percent. You're pushing the limits here, Rumpus. Mathematically no, no, speaking, aren't you? Really? Come on! I said ninety nine. Oh, no, let's right, not actually. let's not I split hairs. Ninety nine percent is not the same as hundred percent. Come on, let's not be silly. I was actually wrong on the identity of the farm that I made for about thirty seconds. I I got it. Oh, so you're not a hundred percent? No, no, you're right. Actually, no, I was right. It's ninety nine percent correct based on the extrapolations of certainty based on the assumptions that rumpus makes you know these things can all be quantified and figured out mathematically and they basically you're prove gibbering, anything. nathan no, you are the one that's shivering can you, whereas brand has got a 100 percent record of being wrong on every single thing that he's done 100 percent amazing oh well considering you said that you were 100 <laughs> percent, i mean we we can't really take these as, as anything other than speculation really i mean 66 percent of statistics are made up on the spot well, this isn't is this is the statistic. This is a fact. This isn't the statistic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've been hundred percent wrong in all my claims about the Isle of Man. That's good to know. You've been hundred percent wrong in all your claims you've made about the Isle of Man. I'll take that little soundbite. That's wonderful to know. We know you're hundred percent wrong because you have a presuppositional argument, Rumpus, that no, assumes that we have based. a curve that and assumes that light bends around it. And that presuppositional argument is why you're hundred right. percent incorrect it's... about all of what you've no, no, asserted about the Isle of Man. We already Nathan, know this. This has been demonstrated. Go... So it's okay. I mean, you can tell us again if you like that you're hundred percent wrong in everything you've asserted about the Isle of Man because it's comical. You know, it's amusing to the audience, but you know, it's fine. It doesn't matter. We accept and understand that you have a presuppositional argument that accounts for flat earth photography by presupposing a curve and presupposing light bends around it with absolutely no scientific proof of the curve. You know, I had to ask you 43 times for it and you didn't present anything. We just got a few YouTubers, maybe NASA, you know, all stuff that's not verifi verifiable by anybody on the panel. You know, we had the conflation of the word we as well. You know, we had all these tricks used. But basically, we don't get to verify this stuff that you assert as proof. All these just-so stories about NASA and their dramatic failings that almost didn't let them achieve what they were hoping to achieve. It's all nonsense. It's just just-so stories. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't prove anything. It's just your acceptance of it, which I find the most amusing. The fact that you can tolerate in your own cognition this nonsense. You, you don't fancy 25 quid's worth of finding out? 25 quid worth of going to St. B's. That's what you will now assert, right? Let's see how predictable I am. 25 quid and I can re-enter the Adelite and prove and validate what NASA presents in terms of photography from space. We went through all this yesterday. Check out yesterday's debate if you want to see Rumpus's Rumpus toes Rumpus held to the fire with absolutely yeah. sod all scientific proof of anything. Fun though it was. <coughs> F.E. Cult, somebody, whatever he was called, F.E. Cult came in and sniped him. Sniped the rumpus? 
like uh, F.E. Oh, why did they do it when we're holding his toes to the fire about his, his fairy tale stories that he believes in? I was enjoying uh, that. Hmm. He, was, he was digging his own ditch constantly. Yeah. He's like, first, oh, no, I'm 100% correct. Oh, wait, no, I'm not 100% correct. Then, yeah, I am 100% correct. I'm skeptical. Oh, wait, I believe in these people. And then I don't actually test it. He's just constantly contradicting himself. And he smears this up with just constantly, nonstop, quick, rambling techno babble, sounding really smart. He could Hello. be like the new, Hello. the new Hello, brilliant Lewis. character in in Star Trek. My bad. Ah, uh, did you snipe him? Sorry, Lewis. Feel free to rejoin. We've been we've been bombarded. I haven't had the icons on the bottom of the we've screen, but you, you would see today. if it was that we've been bombarded since Rumpus joined. So we're really sorry, Lewis. Feel free to rejoin. But I, I, I still, uh, I like the point about the, that picture taken from Pluto. And I pretty much stand my ground that if you're going to have a camera of any type and you're going to be in motion taking a picture of something that does not perfectly move parallel with the uh, camera, then it's going to be blurred somehow because it's going to, not be a still thing that's going to be a taken a picture of. So you cannot ever have a sharp picture in any way. I, I kind that's of agree. Like, that's that's physically impossible. E even if it would like rotate along with that so-called planet perfectly, then still it would be rotating slightly around it as the picture was taken. There's going to be blur. There's not going to be a perfectly sharp picture. That's physically impossible. Optics don't work that way. Cannot be made to work that way. It's a picture can only be way. perfectly sharp if it is not in motion in relation to the object being taken a picture of. It's physically impossible. Erwin, you know the what speed was this uh, satellite traveling at that took this incredible uh, speeds? Like what, fifty thousand miles an hour or something? Hey, for the Cox wanting to be sucked. Hey, P. Mars, how you doing? Good to have you. You gonna say hello? What? Hello, hmm? third time's a charm, maybe? Hello. How you doing? Hello. Good to have you. Hello. Hey, so, um, I've got just one argument for you today. Uh, the sun, we can... ...across the sky in one hour, every hour, every day. Hmm. So we've got approximately 30 minutes left on this live stream. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth debate. If you would like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they're live and a link in the info box once the video has rendered. So be sure to check out this if you're watching live on Nathan Oakley 1980 once it's been re-uploaded. Hopefully I'll go back to streaming on that particular channel in the next few weeks. If you'd like to join the channel, be sure to mute the page you're currently watching then click the link in the info box below this video to join the discussion and express your views on the shape of the earth please don't swear if you do you'll be ejected and if you are please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts you'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream please also share the show as this increases the live audience of course but that in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel so please please share the show and one last time if you are new to the channel or you have not done so already be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth debate. As I say, there is approximately 30 minutes left on this live stream. All right. Because observations prove that it does not basically move away as objects as it approaches the horizon or as it comes up from the horizon, because then that path at the last part would be slower. And it doesn't. doesn't hey, do that. P, how are you doing? Can you hear us? Years. Um, they're trying to porn bomb you. He was. Nah, I don't think that's so. That's twice now that if you listen back, that's twice where it says, "Do you want my cock sucking?" <laughs> I see. Um, All right, yeah. that's lovely. Thanks, P. <laughs> <laughs> I can so, see what's P's, so, P's obviously got that on his mind at the moment. <laughs> so, much. how do you how do you explain the fifteen degree observation of the sun? 
for every observer on the planet every day. Fifteen degree. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit trouble. What do you exactly mean with the fifteen degree observation? I mean every single hour throughout the day, the sun moves fifteen degrees in the sky, no matter oh, okay, where you okay. are on the Earth. Oh well, yeah. Well, if the sun seems to move over the globe of the heavens in relation to the observer uh, at a constant speed following its path and it does it every day so i think that it would move 180 degrees over the course of 24 hours great so what explanation what how do you picture the earth and the sun in relation to one another to account for this observation well, there is, there does seem to be a relation uh, as to what exact path the sun is taking uh, with the position of the Earth. That is the relation that can actually be proven. What, so what is that? If you approach the equator, then the path becomes wider, becomes higher up. The arc becomes more, goes more towards over your head. Right, uh, but all the same. That's the relation. Moving. It, no, the relation is 15 degrees per hour. It is also the case that the further north or south you are, the location of the sun in the sky changes, but it's still encompassing the same amount of sky, the same degrees total, and it's doing it at the same rate. Yeah. So what is your explanation for that? Well, that the uh, sun is moving at a pretty much constant uh, apparent speed over the arc and why does it do that what where is the sun where is the earth in relation to the sun what shape would the earth have to be in order for this observation to occur that's the funny thing about it it, it has no relation to the shape of the earth in my personal view right and so why what is your personal view my, my personal view is that the globe of the heavens is completely unrelated to the shape of the Earth, rather, uh, it points at that uh, the angle of the heavenly body uh, apparent disks, the objects that we get to see, uh, correlate in their position. Uh, relating to the warrior. position you on the Earth you are, but it doesn't actually correlate to the shape of the Earth at all. Um, so I'm they're asking. Detached. They're not I'm at they're separate. <laughs> <laughs> so what because what the is earth the earth is physical and the sun and the moon and all those heavenly bodies are not and what would that mean what what so what it doesn't well, what matter that would it doesn't mean matter is what that the, the heavenly is. bodies all we get to see up there does not prove anything about the shape of the earth at all why I not i can't i mean it just does there, there I, are uh i cannot see a question um, uh, well, okay, well, that, that's fine. That's that's fine, uh, Anthony. I, I will accept your answer. And uh, Arwen's basically said that it's his personal opinion that they're not related. Uh, I think everyone can make up their own minds on that. So, Nathan, can you present? Yeah, sure. You presented. So, we know that refraction is a thing. You guys say it bends around a curve. We say it just distorts what we see. We know that the atmosphere acts as a lens. Rob Skiba showed that when he did his lake experiments, things seem to look bigger in the distance than what you would expect. He called it um, atmospheric lensing. may not be an accurate scientific term, but we know that it does things. Uh, with regards to the stars and your, and your position as you dist uh, go down the curve towards the equator, this is an illustration of showing what the stars are actually doing. So with regards to the apparent position and the actual position, we know that refraction has an effect. What the effect is, is debatable. We no, observe. it's not. Yes, it is. We is know it... exactly what the effects are. Yeah, we see it. And Mick West acknowledges it on his website. Yeah. I'm sure yeah, we, know, we know exactly what the effects are. We also know what they're not. So the sun moving 15 yeah, but... degrees across the sky every day for every observer. On the left. Not, that's, that's not something that refraction can account for. Yeah, refraction can do an awful lot of things according to your model. None of it can't. Can it cannot. It cannot do what I just said. Regardless, I'm showing you that it can. Regardless of what it can do, I'm it cannot. It cannot make the sun appear to move 15 degrees per hour across the sky for every observer when, in fact, that isn't happening. 
So and what if you stops think, us? If you think it can, then you need to explain why. Well, I mean, refraction explains it perfectly. If you can bring stuff back from behind the curve, we can make refraction do anything that we want it to do as well. Can you prove that it's not doing what we say it is? These are the we, actual position. Wait, of the wait, wait, wait. You you think that we're just making up? Yeah, what absolutely. Refraction does. Yeah, seven yes. six R. You made totally made it up. It's not yes, presuppositional no, you, you argument. Don't, you, don't, you don't need to mention math to understand refraction. Right. right. So what I'm saying to you is the sun's apparent position isn't the same as its actual position because of refraction. So when you're saying that you can go or even the stars, so it when doesn't you're matter. That, it doesn't matter, Anthony. Oh, yes, all you need, all you need to on, know, all you need to know. If you base your maths on the you right, you don't need side, maths, dude. You don't yeah. need maths. Oh, well, you oh really? Said, you were the one that <laughs> said. You, you go all south. you need, all you need, is the sun moving 15 degrees every every hour. That's it. That's all you need. That's right. But what does it do when it gets towards the horizon, dude? Does it is it is, is it its actual position or is it its perceived position? So what about getting close to the horizon? It's still moving 15 degrees. Yeah, but if it's not the real actual sun and it's a perceived sun, then it changes the math massively. No, no it, doesn't, it, real world. it doesn't matter because your perception is based on the real world. Mm, but is the thing that you're measuring based on real world or is it an apparent yes. because of refraction? Yes, it's the sun. It doesn't magically change. So it doesn't magically turn into a simulation at, at dusk. Well, what are you talking about? Visuals do actually it does, it does. part because of the Refraction optics, does so have that effect matter. on it in both models. That's what he's trying to get you to concede, but you don't seem to be understanding it, Lou. It, if, it has nothing to do with what I said. Yes, I'm not yes, disagreeing. That's that his point. I'm, yes, it does. Nathan, Nathan, that's his point. I'm not, disagree <laughs> I'm not disagreeing that refraction occurs. Excellent. My point is that it has nothing to do with the sun moving 15 degrees every hour in the sky. Yeah, but 15 degrees when it's like when you see it rising and it's close to the horizon is that rate the same because you say it is well how do you know you measure it you can, you can measure it you can measure it and it is do we agree that the only time that we see see the sun without with the, the the minimalist amount of refraction is at high noon the rest of the time it's subject to more refraction correct yeah measurable amounts and it still moves yeah. regardless regardless Right. So it's, it's an apparent, still, apparent it's still, position. It still, it still moves at 15 degrees every hour. Unless apparent this, position. All right. Yeah. So, so do you, do we all agree that a day is 24 hours? Hang on. Answer me this. How long does it take for the light from the sun to get to Earth? Answer me this. How long is a day? 23 hours, 56 minutes, 18 seconds. All right. And what is 360 divided by one day? How many degrees every hour is that? What's your point? My point is that the sun moves 15 degrees every hour. And right, a circle, a circle, but it's is 360 that, degrees. That maths is based on per the perception of the actual sun's position. And we know that refraction changes things. Right, right. And so my whole point is to contrast what you would expect to see on a spinning ball earth with a distant massive sun right well let me let me give you a better illustration and, and contrast and contrast and, and i'm i'm saying what you would expect to see with that all right in, Lewis, in con in in contrast anthony with what the, the flat earth model predicts which let's is, go with the flat earth which, model which they close with model. which, which was it's, it's with a close sun it's with a close sun lou you Anthony, seem to have verbal diarrhea finished. you understand your question no 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 you guys have verbal diarrhea i haven't come finished on, Lewis, my I point asked, fully this entire question. time that's mine now come on i haven't finished my point fully this entire time but because how you guys you guys keep talking I have answered your question. I'd like to respond with one of my you own. You actually didn't answer the question. I did. I said, is the sun apparent or is it um, perceived? That is your question, not an answer to mine. Yeah, yeah okay. The answer to the your point question of the is, sun, are though. you observing and measuring an actual sun or is it a perceived? That is also a question, Anthony. Right. All right. The answer to your question, Lewis, is you don't know that you're seeing the actual sun because of refraction. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. Because really? It does. So why yeah, does it does. so much when it suits yeah, you? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. Like you see, you look up in the sky. Do you see that light? Yes, I do. Okay, it doesn't matter. Okay, so why does refraction not matter when it suits, but it does matter when it suits? Because it suits. Okay. It's in it, you. You answered that in your own question. Right, because it suits. Yeah, doesn't make it true though, does it? The, the question is, how do you judge when well, it is the suitable? The, the 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 question then becomes, when is it suitable? to use refraction to explain various observations. 
I do have a I question. I would say you. I would say that your judgment is quite lacking in that regard. That's okay. I would say a lot of things are lacking, but let's talk I about know, I know, I know you would, but that's because let's you talk don't about understand them. But let's, let's, let's talk the about life. the flat earth model. Let's no, talk about no, the no, flat no, earth no, model. No, you asked a question. No, 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 no. You hang on. You hang, hang on. on. I haven't I finished ask a question. I have not I finished my entire point. All right. Initially, I'm making a comparison between what you would expect with a ball spinning in relation to a distant light source. So the size of the Earth is insignificant to the distance it is from the sun. So if you have a ball rotating once every 24 hours, the relation of that light source to any point on that ball's surface is approximately 15 degrees. On the flat Earth with a close local sun, you know, spinning around in a circle above the surface, uh, the only place that is going to experience uh, 15 degrees of change in relation to that light source is the North Pole. Because it's in the center of that circle. And that circle, no matter if you're thinking about this on a ball or a disk Earth, is 24 hours for one circuit. And the only place where it's going to change 15 degrees <coughs> in 24 hours is the North Pole. Every single other place on a flat Earth model is going to have drastically different radial changes of the sun. It is not the uh, flat Earth you, model. It is a, a flat Earth model. It's the circle-centric I, I flat Earth that, model. Ar I understand that, Arwen. You already told me your personal opinion. Uh, it's not just Thank my you. personal opinion. Right. There are other people also that have worked out that, another that's, that's alternative great. model, that's like great. Free Energy. He actually made like very, <laughs> very elaborate CGI models of oh. how the rectangular looping Earth may work. It's very oh. elaborate, very detailed. Oh, wow. I guess yeah. I guess we should probably be coming up with free energy generators pretty soon no, then, huh? It's, it's his channel name, Free Energy with an A, oh. not an E. Yeah, oh, sounds like it's a really an actual channel. Guy. It's been out sounds there for like over three years. <laughs> Look it up sometime. Sounds, sounds like Look it up sometime, guy. Lewis. I have. I've the looked up circle centric energy. flat earth model energy. is not the flat earth model. It is it's, a it's the one flat I, earth it's, model. I understand that, it's Arwen, a flawed but it is the flat one, earth model that I disagree that I just, with. Yeah, it's flawed for the reasons that I just brought up. I understand that you don't yeah, agree. But it's just as flawed as your model, which doesn't make any damn sense. No, my, uh, my, my model makes perfect sense. No, it, it is, makes perfect sense questions? in your mind because you believe well, it like nothing now, else. Out now, now that I've fully put forward my uh, disc versus ball comparison, Anthony, perhaps you'd uh, care to address that in some sort of fashion, maybe similar to Arwen in saying that, oh, well, that's just not my disc model. Is this the part where I can ask my question or was it a question to no, answer? No, no, the, the part where I answer your question comes after you respond to what I've said. Right. So this is the second question. Well, I didn't catch the second question. You made a really long convoluted explanation, something saying that you it matches your model. But what is the question? Right. So on a disk Earth, right, we all agree that the sun takes 24 hours to make its circuit, regardless of whether that hey, circuit Arif, is a is that is hold, hold on a second. Sorry, Lewis. Really uh, sorry. Yeah, hold, hold, cool. Hey, Arif. Hello. Fun. Sorry, continue. Great. Sorry, Here's Lewis. So regardless of whether which model you accept, we all agree that the sun takes 24 hours to make its circuit, whatever that circuit might actually be. That's so? something we agree upon. Okay. So t 24 hours is the approximate time that that circuit takes. 360 degrees are how many degrees are in a circle. So 360 divided by 24 is 15. The only place where you're at the center of that circuit on the flat earth disk model isn't the North Pole. Every other place is going to experience drastically different degree changes if you're looking at the flat earth model. Whereas the globe does not have that issue because yeah. it's distant from the sun and it is the thing <laughs> rotating. And that's why the circle centric flat earth model is incorrect. I, I know. Thank you, Arwen. We agree on that. Hello. I, I think that you're missing part of the alternative model, which would be the um, the ecliptic path of the sun on the flat Earth plane. Are you familiar with the ecliptic path of the sun on the on the flat Earth plane? The ecliptic path. Oh, uh, oh, the the uh, ecliptic path on the flat Earth is, plane. Is that, not familiar. Is that where the is that where the moon goes in front of the sun and causes an eclipse? Because I mean, it doesn't. Yeah, please so make, no. make me familiar. Make me familiar, please. You mean, right. your, your perception is that the, the, moon, the sun goes around the North Pole in circles, correct? 
Um, yes, that is my that is my perception uh, of the flat Earth model. Yeah, that's the one that's been put forward most often by most people, like sure. Mark Sargent, like ODD TV, like uh, Patricia Steer, like Antonio Subarats, like uh, uh, Pancho Pete, like all of these people. Uh, except you, apparently. But okay, go on. Okay, so um, there's something called the ecliptic path of the sun on the flat Earth model. And you're obviously, by self-admission, not familiar with what I'm describing. I'd suggest you um, look at the channel called AJC1844. Look at Flat Earth Smarts episode number... Number 12, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Maybe you could um, pull it up for me. This is the uh, platform after all. It's a 27-minute video, but essentially the point is this. Um, the path of the sun that you describe isn't the path of the sun on the flat Earth model because it doesn't match the observations. There is an explanation for it. It's in so, the video. Um, I will send you a link for it. But essentially, draw a circle around the center of the, flat, uh, around the, center of the North Pole. But on that circle, instead of putting the sun's path, draw a spirograph of circles going all the way around. And that's the movement of the sun on the ecliptic plane on the flat Earth model. That's the explanation and the answer to your question. There is no that's, 15 degrees problem. Now, if it's a that, position that of it, causes even more problems than it would solve. Yeah. Exactly. That, exactly. that doesn't that doesn't solve anything. Okay, no, no. what the observation? How, you you, you exactly. have to explain. You have to explain how the sun moves 15 degrees every hour for everybody on the planet, no matter right. where they are. The Arctic Circle. The Arctic Circle. Yes, the Arctic Circle. The, the path of the sun on the flat Earth model to, the, to represent real world uh, travels along that path. And that's why it creates the... So it's, everything's a circle, but the, mo the, the movement of the sun itself moves around the Arctic Circle. And that's so essentially going to give you the same results. So should the sun appear in the north for no. everybody? Because that's, that's what I would expect if the, if the sun's moving around the Arctic Circle, is that for everybody the sun would be in the north. Okay, um, I will give you a video link and a time in the video link for you to consider and then maybe perhaps come back to me with it. And then you <laughs> will see the explanation for it matches the observations in real world. There is no problem with the 15 degrees. You think this there is, is but there isn't. Really, these are really simple thought experiments, Anthony. Yeah, well, I've got a real simple thought experiment in response to you, and I'd like an answer, but I'm not getting a chance I, to answer it. So can well, I ask you a question? Yes or yeah, no? Yeah, yeah, let's Great. get it. Let's get How long it. Is how long does it take for the light from the sun to get to the Earth? Uh, approximately eight minutes, according to the Excellent. distance of the sun and the calculations of the speed of light. Excellent. Hang on. Is that me? Yeah, yeah. If you could turn that music off, that would be awesome. Hey, hey, Nathan Oakley. Welcome Nathan back. Oakley, owner of the show. Maybe if Perhaps you could... it's time for a change of pace. We've taken some time to look at the various maps of the world and the layout that some of us think might be credible is the circular layout. It's generically referred to as an azimuthal equidistant projection. And while it still has some questions, it seems to be the best that we can find for the moment. For some reason, this map really does seem to annoy some people. And while I'm inclined to think that it serves some purpose, I also think it might be keeping us from making further progress. Most of us can find our way around this map. The land masses that it shows certainly seem to exist, but in the absence of further evidence that can accurately place them in relation to each other, perhaps we should let them sink into the oceans for now and look a little further afield. I'll leave Antarctica there for the time being so that none of us go falling off the edge. There may hey. Good stuff, the explanation, man. Nathan's at 21 minutes. 21 minutes? Cool. <laughs> 20... Back to that. constellation of Gemini, and from the ground you'll see that it crosses your eastern horizon at about 4am. The sky rotates around Polaris and the sun crosses the sky to the western horizon, arriving there about 8pm. 
We are now at the height of summer north of the equator and the path across the sky is over the Tropic of Cancer, the summer solstice. By the middle of September, the sun has progressed even further around the ecliptic and is now entering the constellation Virgo, where it crossed the eastern horizon at about 6am and crosses the sky to the western horizon at about 6pm. By the end of the year, the sun is back where it started, heading into the constellation of Sagittarius, with sunrise at 8am and passing through the sky above the Tropic of Capricorn. It provides summer again south of the equator. So let's recap the story so far. North of the equator from the middle of winter, the sun crosses your eastern horizon and takes this path through the sky above the Tropic of Capricorn to your western horizon. In the spring, it crosses your eastern horizon and takes this path through the sky above the equator and sets in the west. By the summer, north of the equator, the sun crosses your eastern horizon to pass over the Tropic of Cancer during the day before setting at the western horizon. It then continues to head away from Polaris through the autumn equinox and finally by the middle of the northern winter it's back where it started and rises above the Tropic of Capricorn one year from where we began. It seems like a fairly credible reason for the change of seasons during the year so I'd like to add one or two extras to this for people to think on until next time. There's no need here for me to complicate things any further than to show where the sun is at the equinoxes and solstices. I'm sure you're now able to work out where the sun is as it passes from one to the next as the year progresses. So I'd like to take one more look behind the scenes before I close. One subject of much argument among flat earthers is the notion that the sun needs to somehow speed up over the Tropic of Capricorn. I would suggest that there's no need for it to do so. The sun travels around the ecliptic at a steady speed of about one degree, about 70 miles per day. Additionally, the whole sky rotates once in 23 hours, 56 minutes and 4 seconds. The fact that the sun appears to cover a longer path over the Tropic of Capricorn is nothing more than a consequence of us measuring its path by ground speed. Its speed in the sky looks pretty constant from here. So, in closing, I appreciate that for most of us this subject is still fairly new and takes a slightly different approach to a problem with which we've wrestled for some time. As such, it's probably a good place to finish for the moment and provide people with some time to digest these things before we move on to take a closer look at the moon You can just see loads of bickering going on in the hangout. Wow. I, so, yeah, yeah, Nathan, I know when you're completely wrong about the perception of reality that you have, you know, and other people are too. It is, it's amazing right. what kind of Lewis? bickering. Oh, you don't have Lewis? to get all snide about that. Lewis? Lewis, can I just say it specifically addressed the 15 degrees that you were requesting us to No, no, it didn't, right? No, it, it addressed yeah. the 15 oh, it, it in relation to the heavens. In relation to the right. heavens, all right, it not in relation to the actual Earth or observations. Or are you talking from a position of ignorance? Because if you haven't watched it, you don't know what you're talking about. No, I did. I just did. I looked. I looked at it, and it didn't explain the uh, observations from example. where the sun is coming. Really disagreeing from. about the sky. Right. It, it explains specifically the 15 degrees point that I, um, that Lewis was asking. If you haven't watched it, Arwen, you're speaking from ignorance and you should go no, watch it. No, no, Riley, comment. don't talk down to me. I know what that video is Arwen, about. You I can see it. You haven't watched it, Arwen. You speak I did. I did watch it on the actual Hangout looking at it. Then you we haven't were bickering it. right here. Deal specifically with the 15 degrees per hour that um, Lewis is addressing. If you haven't watched it, Arwen, shush. But Lewis is not Think addressing that. that. He was Lewis asking was specifically trying to that. address the observations from the Earth. Yes, not from in relation of the point. star motions and the position of the sun within the construct of the point. astrological charts, as it were. It that is what this video clearly was point. about. It wasn't about the position of the visible sun on the Earth. It okay. didn't explain well, that at all. All right. So can I ask my question now, please, or not? <laughs> yes, I can't Thank wait. You.
Nine minutes was the time it takes for the sunlight to get to eight, the Earth. Eight, 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 eight. Yeah, that's fine. Why is it that when, when the sun sets, we do not see a tidal wave of shadow from the north to the south traversing towards the sun nine minutes later? Why do we actually see a sun dilating over the horizon, very small, and it's very local to the area we're in? The absence of the tidal wave or shadow means that there is no terminator line. That means the Earth cannot be spherical, and it means that we are not spinning. Well, you wouldn't see that, like, because you of only see you what you only see light when it hits your eyes. So there, if that ever happens, oh. so like, if, for example, if the sun just turned off mi in midday, we wouldn't know for eight minutes. Yeah. The sun so, would stop making light, and I'm eight minutes right later, now, eight minutes later, everything would be pitch black, and we would see the Milky Way and all the other stars up in the heavens. But on the preview uh, right we now, we wouldn't see a tidal wave of darkness approaching. That's exactly what we should see on your model. Why? No, spherical, why? and no, we are. That, no, that has nothing. To, by the way, by the way, that has nothing to do with the shape of the Earth. That has to do has with light and it, how yeah, we and see the rotation. Literally, that has to, that has to, do, that has to do with shadow. light. That has no. to do with light, Anthony. That has, has nothing to, to the, do with the shape of the Earth. It has everything to do with the axial rotation and the curvature of the Earth that you claim that we live on. We should see a tidal wave of shadow passing north to south in the direction of north to south, heading towards the horizon. North should be in a tidal wave. Yeah. That will be the Terminator line, and we I mean, do not see that. I, I can speak for myself. I notice uh, the sun shining up on the clouds every night. Yeah, there's but you don't sun. see the sun I mean, there, in the heavens. Wave. There's you a tidal see... wave of, of shift in right, the angle correct. of light on the ground, and that, that change in angle on the ground, I think, is indicative of a spherical spinning Earth. But it's not like I, I. I'm just. You would see if the Earth I guess, was actually I guess the answer to your question. Arwen, it, Arwen to be fair, Arwen, block of Arwen, shadow moving up from the bottom, and Arwen, you still see me. the clouds yes. up there lit up perfectly, and you would see a block of shadow moving upwards, because that is what actual shadow does. Yeah, I so know. And despite I, I the globe of the do. heavens and the sun being part do. of that, I, you do. going you around do it. in a circular motion and with the 15 degrees an hour, which you are correct at, it's not actually a physical object moving behind a curvature because shadow workings disprove that. Okay, so let me just finish off. I want to just say two things. Lewis asked specifically about the 15 degrees. I gave him a video citation that Arwen's not seen but argued with. My challenge to both Arwen and Lewis is to go and watch the video and come back and tell me why it's wrong. And my second point is if we lived on a sun, that uh, an Earth that had a sun 93 million miles away, when that sun sets, we should see a tidal wave of shadow from the north to the south heading in the direction of the sunset, and it should be a tidal wave of shade. That yes. would be our Terminator line. That's what we should see in real world. Do we yeah, see yeah. that? Of course we don't. And with that, I'm going to say first and foremost, a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of the debating panel for making this debate possible. And of course, a massive thank you to all of the live audience for tuning in. If you've not done so already, be sure to like, comment, share and subscribe. I've been Nathan Oakley and I will see you all in the next video.